Rick Wright, in my opinion, is Pink Floyd's unsung hero. Although he is overshadowed most of the time by the songwriting talent of Roger Waters and the guitar and vocals of David Gilmour, Richard Wright was a major contributor to the signature sound of Pink Floyd's music. Being a songwriter and co-lead vocalist from the early years of the band up until the 1975 album, Wish You Were Here. So, what led to his exit from Pink Floyd during the recording of their 1979 album, The Wall? To begin, let's look at the history of Roger Waters and Wright. Since their time together in school, friends, classmates, and family members testified to the fact that Roger Waters always had a headstrong personality, never shying away from confrontation and having bullying tendencies. Many times, Rick Wright was at the receiving end of such treatment, mostly because of his almost opposite demeanor, and while others say that Waters was jealous of Wright's superior musicianship. Whatever the reason, over time, Waters' bullying towards Wright only intensified. Apparently, it got so bad during the 1977 In the Flesh tour that Rick decided to quit the band mid-tour. He changed his mind only after band manager Steve O'Rourke convinced him to stay. After the tour, Rick released his first solo album in 1978 titled Wet Dream. Having only moderate success both commercially and critically, Waters criticized his bandmate for wasting his time and material on releases that, according to Waters, nobody will listen to anyway. This contributed to Rick's declining confidence in his songwriting and kept him from trying to input any new material for Pink Floyd's new album. By this time, Waters had become frustrated that Wright was not contributing to writing songs for their albums, yet he was still claiming an equal share of production royalties. So first thing Roger did was get rid of the production credit from the band to himself, David Gilmour and Bob Ezrin. This caused further friction between Wright and Waters. Rick was finding it increasingly difficult to work with others around, so he would go into the studio in the evenings and work with engineer James Guthrie, and avoid Roger Waters and Bob Ezrin. During The Wall's recording, any time Rick would try and record a keyboard part to a song, Roger once again jumped at the opportunity to criticize his playing. According to Ezrin, Wright was a victim to Roger's cruelty. No matter what Rick did, it never seemed to be good enough for Roger. This led to Rick Wright feeling a disconnect with the band and the project, and it certainly did not help with his major case of writer's block. Now, let's look at the context of this entire situation. What else was going on in Rick's life around this time? The time period of The Wall's recording was a turbulent one. Pink Floyd had recently lost a lot of money because of very bad investments. Being nearly bankrupt, they desperately needed to release a new album. The band was also in the middle of a tax exile, meaning the members were living and working out of the country to avoid high tax payments in their native UK. Roger, David, and Nick's families were living with them. However, Rick Wright's family was still back in England, on account of his kids being a little bit older and in school. This caused him to feel homesick and miss his kids terribly, and caused a major strain in his marriage. The only time he could be with his family was during the band's time off from recording, when they could go together on holiday. So what does all this backstory add up to? Well, Columbia Records offered the band more money and more incentives to complete the album in time for a Christmas release. Roger agreed and decided to increase the band's workload and cut everyone's vacation time short. Wright, who was already at odds with Roger, decided that time spent with his family was more important than going along with Roger's new schedule, and refused to cancel his holiday in Rhodes. Roger was stunned and furious and gave an ultimatum. Wright was out of the band or he would scrap the entire project and release The Wall as a solo album. Gilmore, on a vacation of his own in Dublin, tried to calm the situation. He spoke to Wright and gave him his support, but at the same time reminded Rick of his minimal contributions. But Roger's mind was made up, and there was no changing it. He insisted Wright leave, or The Wall would be shelved. Accounts differ on what happened next. According to Nick Mason, Roger Waters called band manager Steve O'Rourke and demanded Wright be fired by the time mixing for The Wall was to begin in Los Angeles. Other accounts say that Wright quit, walked out on his own accord. 
worried about the band's financial situation, interpersonal relationships in the band, and the repercussions of his staying. The news of his departure was kept private from the music press. Roger Waters allowed Wright to stay on as a hired session musician to finish recording his keyboard parts, aided by other hired musicians, at Cherokee Studios in Los Angeles. He was also allowed to stay on as a hired musician for the Wall Tour. Ironically, he would be the only member of the band to profit from the tour. Waters, Gilmore, and Mason had to bear the financial loss of the concerts. Wright has mentioned that he has played on the tour to the best of his abilities, hoping Waters would reconsider his dismissal, but it was to no avail. When the tour finished in 1981, Wright was no longer a member of Pink Floyd. The first time that fans became aware of his non-membership was on the sleeve of the next album in 1983, The Final Cut, where his name was obviously missing from the credits. He made his return to Pink Floyd, albeit still with a hired musician's credit, when the band reconceived in 1987 for A Momentary Lapse of Reason and its supporting tour. Pink Floyd have a long and tumultuous history. Rick Wright leaving the band is just another chapter in it. Or should I say, just another brick in the wall. <laughs>